Hi, this is Brad with Copper Creek Cuts, a lawn care company in Northeast Florida. And to answer the question, what is aeration? Well, it's very simple. Aeration is the process of aerating. Thank you so much for watching. I really do. No, I'm just kidding. Okay, so then what is aerating? Aerating is basically just uh, poking holes in your turf, in your lawn. You can either do that with spike aeration, which is just what it sounds like. Imagine a nail. If you just punched a nail into your lawn, that's spike aeration. There's also core aeration, which is when uh, a hollow tine goes into the ground and when it comes out, it pulls a plug of dirt and grass and whatever else is in your lawn. But the idea is that these holes provide more air, sunlight, water, nutrient, you know, all the stuff grass needs to grow healthy by poking all these holes in it, you're gonna let the root get those things it needs. The other thing it can do is that if your soil is compacted or it's more firm than maybe the grass would like, you're almost tilling the soil by kind of loosening it up when you pull those plugs. That's what we're doing here today. We have already prepped the lawn by raking. That was a ton of work, if I do say so myself. That took about, a, I think, an hour and a half. It was just me. This is not a big yard, so plan on spending a lot of time on prep work. I don't know if it's been done in several years, so if you're keeping up with it every year, you know, it might not be that bad. Today what we're running is a Toro 24-inch stand-on aerator. When it comes to aeration, the tools that are available to you are really only limited by your budget. You can just walk around the yard with a little metal stick, you know, or a wooden dowel and aerate your yard that way. It's not going to be very efficient and it's going to take forever, but you could do that and spend, you know, next to nothing. They have cleats you can strap on your shoes for spike aeration. You just walk around. Manual aerators, tow behind aerators that you can hook up if you already have a zero turn mower. A golf cart or an ATV or something, you can do that. Then you have walk behind aerators. Those are going to be the next step up in cost. Then you get into the, the big boys like the stand on aerators. One of the reasons I really like this Toro one is it actually comes with an attachment in the front that turns it into a spreader as well. So if you are someone who does this enough that you're going to look into investing in a stand on machine, make sure you get one that's versatile like this Toro. And for not that much extra money, you can now have a stand on spreader as well. So then you can, while you're doing these aerations, when you're done, you can upsell fertilizer. You're still bringing the same machine. You're not having to buy another spreader. You're not having to break out a manual spreader. You know, there's, there's a lot of good benefits to something like this where you've got your aerator and then you've got a spreader hooked onto it. You've got a nice cover for whatever materials you have. The hopper on this, I will put on the screen what it can hold, but it is big. After you filled your materials up, you can go ahead and cover it back up so no water or bugs or leaves or anything fall in. From here forward is the spreader. There's a little, uh, I believe it's either inch and a half or two inch hitch right here on the front of the aerator that you can put different attachments into. This cabling, runs all the way to this control unit which ties into the aerator's battery and runs this. We've got our gas tank here, our air filter here, our exhaust here, oh, which is still a little bit hot for me driving it here. Here's your hydros. You can see these are your releases. You've got some access panels here. These are the linkages that of course will steer the machine. This piston is what will drive the aerating tines down into the ground. Here you can set your weight. So depending on how heavy or fat you are, <laughs> I don't know if I should have said that. <laughs> so depending on how heavy you are, that's your adjustment there. You've got adjustments here, zero to five inches of depth by selecting this thing here. This is gonna be your readout which is off now because the machine is off, otherwise you wouldn't be able to hear me. You've got your choke, your throttle, your key start, and your parking brake. And then this is just like a zero or a stand on mower, the way that you control it. So here you've got your spreader speed, which can go faster or slower. And this is actually your gate control for your, your uh, materials. I don't know if you can see that. I'm gonna zoom in, but it might be too dark. But this is actually what'll you know open and close your gate. Here is your platform, which does not actually uh, flip up. And then this is going to be what you press to bring your tines down into the ground. So you need to have a way to bring them up and down because you need to drive around. You don't want those tines in the ground all the time. Oh, my recorder just fell out. And then here's a view from the other side. 
I don't believe there's there's too much else. I guess, let's see if I can get you a shot of the tines. So here, hopefully you can see those tines. I don't think the lighting's gonna be great, um, but you can see there's a little bit of a tip here and then it's hollow so I can stick my finger up inside of there. And then this back side is cut out as well so that once that core is pulled, it can just keep falling out as it pulls more. Hopefully you'll be able to see the back ends of these tines are cut out uh, or they're hollow. So that's, that's basically how they work. It's a fairly simple process that again, you can get as expensive and complicated as you want to as your budget allows. Here's a little maintenance chart so you can see what your wheel should be, where your grease points are, how often you need to grease them, some oil points. and That's always nice to have, especially just nice open right here so you don't have to dig for it or find your owner's manual. So that is the 24 inch Toro aerator with the spreader attachment. Let me see if I can use that spreader without the motor being on so you can hear it. Yeah, so since this spreader is on the 12 volt system, I should be able to, again, that sun, we're at zero, one, so it goes all the way up to 10. You can see it going there. Not that you would run this without the machine on, then you'd kill your battery and you wouldn't move anywhere. That's it. We're going to go ahead and uh, aerate this little patch here. Again, this is the probably the toughest part about that aeration was getting everything prepped. But all those leaves came out of that little patch of yard right there. That's what that's what oak trees in Florida will do. It's like they just drop leaves or something. You want to make sure you mark your irrigation heads. This gentleman has not done that, but I told him uh, you know, I asked him to, I said, hey, can you mark them? Otherwise I can't really be liable if I damage them because I don't know where they are. They aren't marked, so we're not gonna go too deep. The other issue is we have this huge oak tree with roots. I'm gonna kind of stay as far away from that as I can. And that's why I don't wanna go too deep with those tines. Even though they can go to five inches, I am confident that the root system is gonna be all throughout the yard. So I wanna go fairly shallow. So here's an example of what it's pulling. I don't know if this is the full depth that it's getting, which is not very deep at all. Um, one thing I also forgot, I'm doing this free for this guy. I charged him for the leaf cleanup, but I told him, hey, this is my first time on this aerator, so any negative comments about, oh, you shouldn't be charging for that, you're barely doing anything. Yeah, I agree, that's why I didn't. But you can see how, how it pulls a little thing of soil out and uh, you get some of the thatch, that dead stuff that's that's left in the lawn, but it just, it's good to get all that stuff out. So that was a quick video on aeration. If you've got more questions about aeration, check out the description. The best place to go for information about should you aerate your yard or how is your local agricultural extension office. The folks there will most likely know the types of grass you have in your yard and the best way to take care of them. So do that, it gives them something to do. These are folks who have a lot of knowledge and uh, in my opinion, or at least in my area, are underutilized. So they would love if you went and asked them questions. But anyways, here's some more videos YouTube thinks you might like. As always, thanks so much for watching. I really do appreciate it.